Okay, my name is Elder Lindberg. I'm Elder Nyson. And we're missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, commonly known as the Mormons. And uh, we're just here, we're here in Anderson, Indiana, uh, serving for two years. Uh, we come out here to the state of Indiana and our, our mission is, is for two years. We can rotate around through different cities and different places throughout the state during that two years. And uh, basically our whole mission, our whole goal is to bring people closer to Jesus Christ. Yep. Um, to, in order to, to go on a mission, what you have to do is first of all you have to, have to believe in Jesus Christ. You have to know that He is your Savior. And you have, you have to want to serve Him. And what you do then is you send in papers, um, an application form basically, kind of like for a job. And put all your health stuff on there your education, things like that, and you send it in to the head of the, head of the church, which is actually a, who, uh, a man named Thomas S. Monson, who we believe to be a prophet of God today, and he reviews all the information and then prays over that and decides where you go um, all around the world. And so we got called to the Indian, Indiana, Indianapolis mission. Um, there's other missions in Russia, uh, Germany, Australia, uh, South America. But we've been called to Indiana, and then like Elder Lindbergh said, we get moved from city to city. Um, I've been out for about 20 months now. We do this for two years. Um, my last area was Columbus, Indiana, where I served for six months. And just like Elder Lindbergh says, we, we try to find those who are wanting to come closer to Jesus Christ to help them in any way that we can to do so. Like, what would you do, I mean, in a period from the time you start your mission until the end? What, what, what all does that happen? Um, well, you mean, like, what kinds of things do we go out and do every day? Yeah. You know, pretty much, you know, we're the guys that, that probably have knocked on your door maybe before. Uh, that's what we do a lot of times. Uh, we, go, we work every day from 10 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. And so what we'll do... From the time we wake up, we wake up at 6.30, exercise, shower, do all that, and then we study for two hours. We study the scriptures, uh, both the, the Bible, the Book of Mormon, and other scriptures that we've been given, um, and we, we study that for two hours. Then we go out and we work, and uh, you know, we'll knock doors, talk to people on the street, uh, go and visit members of our church, do anything we can to find people who are trying to make those steps to come closer to God and uh, we just kind of have uh, different ways that, that we try and help help them to do that but mainly that's through helping them to, to read the scriptures to pray and help them to to gain that relationship with Christ so that they can really feel the power of his his love and atonement in their life what's some of the sacrifices you guys go through to do that well to come out here you have to give up a lot of things I suppose um, I think now though I, I don't really think of them as sacrifices, I think of them as blessings, but um, while we're out here we don't listen to the radio or the news, um, we don't watch TV, movies, so we're kind of out of the whole loop with that as far as that goes. Um, we leave our family behind. Um, we do this for two years and we can actually, we write, we write letters once a week so we can come in contact with our family and friends, but um, as far as talking to them or seeing them, um, it won't be we can talk to my guests on Mother's Day and Christmas, so twice, twice a year, and um, that's about the only contact we have with them. So that's, I suppose, kind of a sacrifice. Um, Another sacrifice that is, is made is that we actually don't get paid to do this. We actually pay to be out here doing this. And uh, the total cost of the two years usually comes out to be about $12,000. And so either we personally have to earn that money before we come out and pay for that, or our family has to pay that money, and they can either do that through a you know, $400 a month payment or just uh, pay at some total. But that's, uh, that's one of the big things is that, you know, in order for us to do this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, we don't have time to be working another job, so that, that money had to be provided some other way or before we even came out so here. You guys said you didn't watch any TV or anything. Why don't you watch TV and all that stuff? What is that? Um, just while we're out on our missions for the two years, we don't watch it so that we can be focused on the work and what we're doing. Um, a lot of things on TV today can kind of distract from the spirit of the work. And 
um, as we teach about Jesus Christ, we want to have our mind focused on him and what we're sharing about and be in tune with that spirit that, that he gives to us as we do so. And so that's why we kind of abstain from the, the things of the world while we're out here. Now, it, what you're saying is quite a bit different than anything in the world, right? I mean, so do you, what do you think about I mean, do you, do you get concerned that people would make fun of you or talk about you? Or does that bother your mission at all, or what do you think about that? Um, I, I do. I must say we get made fun of on a daily basis, probably. I mean, heck, I, it is probably pretty funny to see a couple of guys in white shirts riding in, on bicycles in the middle frame with helmets on. I mean, so how do you feel about that? I feel fine about it, you know. Uh, anything, if, if it's bringing attention to the church, to the message, you know, that, that Jesus Christ is present today, you know, so be it. So you guys don't think for any reason you need to be relevant or change the message or uh, act like the world to reach the world? No, uh, just because, you know, that's not what Christ did. That's right. Christ, his, his message is unchanging. It, his message is, is a message that's eternal and, uh, you know, it doesn't sway to what the world wants. The world needs to bring themselves in line with him. So. What else can you tell me? Uh, <laughs> we could tell you a lot. Yeah. So it depends on what you want to know. I mean, how, how's the mission going here in, in uh, Anderson? It's actually going really well. Uh, we've had, we have a lot of people we're working with and teaching right now. Uh, the past few months, there's been several baptisms. Uh, people that are, you know, have, have come into the waters of baptism that didn't necessarily have a faith in God or Christ before. And so, in that respect, you know, people people are coming closer to Christ. Do you feel like people are really more hungry right now than they ever been, as far as receiving it? Um, I would say, maybe not so much hungrier. Um, it all depends on when, when someone's ready, when people are, are ready for the message. But I would definitely say that, that uh, people are, are getting more accustomed to it. People, people are more noticing of, of what's going on outside of their front door. Yeah. What, what is your uh, ultimate goal like over the next year here in Anderson? Um, pretty much... That's, that's our main goal, that's our main focus, is to bring people closer to Christ by helping them to have faith in Him, repent, uh, be baptized, and to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's our main focus. Wow. Anything else you could add? Yeah, well, I'm actually serving in Elwood. It's kind of funny I'm here in Anderson today, but yeah, the same, same thing. Just um, it's, it's a joy to really see the change that comes into people's lives as they do apply the principles of uh, the te teachings of the Gospel of Jesus Christ because changes their lives, you see happiness brought into it and replace kind of that sorrow that they might have or that void in their heart that they might have and you see a great change that comes about because of it so it's very enjoyable. Now if you guys work like if I'm getting this right you work from 10 in the morning till 9 at night that's 11 hours a day. Um, I mean don't you get tired of doing that or don't you just say yeah it's not worth it or people don't want to hear this or mm -hmm. you have your days. <laughs> yeah, yeah you definitely have your days and your times but uh, I think both of us could say we're both on our latter part of our two years. You know, we've both done over a year and a half of this work. And, you know, you come to a point where you realize you don't have that much time left. And you really realize just how important this is and, and how much it is helping other people. And so you, you begin to kind of forget about those other things, forget about yourself. And it's really just like what Jesus Christ told his apostles. He told them in the New Testament, He that seeketh his life shall lose it, but he that loseth his life in my service shall find everlasting life. So that's what it's really all about, I 